Hi, I'm Will. I'm Norm. Norm, it is new iPad day. Oh my goodness. Nine days ago, Tim Cook went on stage and unveiled the new iPad. We've been waiting for it for about a year. Nine days is what I've been waiting for. Okay. Uh, Norm, I went to the Apple store this morning. Yeah. Was I got there at 9.30. It was all cleared out. They had extras left over. It, the age of iPad shortages is over. Go no. get the is iPad that, is that because people aren't waiting in line to buy it or because they actually got the supply chain right? He said that they had a line around the corner this morning, but it seems like supply chain was pretty good and you could just blast right in. Uh, let's talk about the hardware a little bit. Okay, so we got the Wi-Fi model. There is a Wi-Fi and a cellular model. Yeah. This is the Wi-Fi black, obviously. There's going to be a white model or there is one white model. Mm -hmm. And this is just a 16 gig. This is the one we're going to have for the office. So It's the cheapest one that you can buy right now. $500. Exactly. Now, what's special about it? The big thing that's special about the new iPad is the screen. Uh, it's quadruple the resolution of the original iPad and the iPad 2. It's 2058, 2048, 2048. by 1536. So the first iPad and the iPad 2 had 1024 by 768 resolution yeah. screens. And this is just basically four of those, yeah. but squished. Into the same space. In the same 9.7 inch screen. So the upshot is that you get the same kind of pixel density, or very close to it, that you get on the uh, iPhone 4 yeah. and 4S. It's, it's not quite 300 DPI, it's 264 pixels per inch, mm -hmm. but uh, just looking well, at it, Apple claims distance. and experts agree that when you hold it at iPad distance versus iPhone distance, right. the pixel density ends up being about the same. Uh, now we've downloaded some apps so we yep. can show you what the new screen looks like because that's the thing we're most excited about. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to start with Kindle okay. because font uh, rendering is, is really key. They've updated the Kindle app so that it, the font rendering is using the new higher resolution but the actual framing of the app is not. So I'm going to load this up. I've got a book already queued up. And not every app has been updated, not every iPad app even has been updated to support Very few. new resolution. Yeah, 12 or 15. Yes. The core Apple stuff, Tweetbot, Kindle, a couple of games, mm -hmm. and that's pretty much it. And Kindle actually just updated yesterday, like you said earlier, the text in the actual books, yeah. now retina quality. Yeah, full density. Let's grab my, yes. my iPad. There's another thing that I immediately noticed is that the color temperature of the display has changed. So we have uh, the brightness setting set exactly the same yeah. between the iPad 2 and the new iPad. Mm -hmm. And you can tell just like the difference between the iPhone 4 and the iPhone 4S, the new iPad is warmer. Yeah, much, much warmer, uh, it's a, which means uh, instead of a fluorescent type glow, it's more of a, an incandescent light glow. So the iPad 2 and the first iPad, this screen wasn't bad by any account. It's, it's very usable. Very usable, it's IPS screen, really good viewing angle, pretty vibrant, text read okay, we're fine. Yeah. On the new screen, the new screen looks like a backlit piece of paper. Yeah, it's a glowing sheet of paper, that, that text is just so sharp. So this is on the second uh, from from the smallest setting. I usually this is what I normally read on when I'm using Kindle app on my uh, iPad too. Mm -hmm. uh, the interesting thing is that now the smallest font size is readable. On the iPad 2, I couldn't use the smallest font size, even with smoothing and all the stuff that, that right. they do to make that work. So, so reading, a definite improvement. Big big improvement there. Um, I think that I want to look at is Tweetbot. Yep, Tweetbot, I think it's probably our favorite Definitely. third party Twitter client. Great Twitter app. Mm -hmm. uh, they've updated resolution graphics. It doesn't look any different. Yeah. Uh, the font rendering is much more crisp, but the actual framing and all that stuff is the same. I'm going to find a picture in here, hopefully nothing uh, offensive. Yep. Um, yep, no love so far. Uh, and as you know, scrolling all, you know, through an app with the new iPad just as fast as it was with the second iPad, the yeah. iPad 2, it uses an A5X chip. Let's look at the photo. The C CPU is essentially the same. Yeah. It's still dual core, dual core CPU. It has quad core graphics. Uh, more memory. It's more memory, uh, so it can process images on the new screen. So images of great in Tweetbot. Yeah, Tweetbot looks good. So going into the App Store, uh, Apple is going to call out all the new apps that support the new Retina display. Uh, and over time, we'll see more more applications. You mean like Air Supremacy? Yeah. So this actually is a, a game that they demoed on stage. And uh, we were kind of curious, because we didn't know whether this game would actually be rendered at 2048 by 1536 or rendered a low resolution yeah. upscaled. Uh, we can't tell. We you think you can tell. tell. I think that it actually is rendering at 2048 by 1536 because I can see really sharp aliasing and the edges here look much finer than they do on the iPad 2. So what we're going to do is when we're back in the office on Monday, we'll uh, actually do screen grabs and do side-by-side -side Photoshop comparisons from the iPad 2 and the new iPad to see uh, what actually has changed. But I just want to show you what the game looks like right mm -hmm. now. 
Uh, it, it's it's pretty stunning, especially for an iPad game. Yeah, there's a lot of cool effects, and it's, it's really vibrant. That blue sky just pops. I'm looking at it from the side, and this is still it's still an IPS panel, and it looks just as clear, almost off-axis. Um, early really reports off from iFixit seem to imply that it's a Samsung panel. Yeah. Uh, it seems like LG and Sharp aren't ready to ship uh, 2048 by 1536 panels yet. Uh, you want to talk about photos for a second? Yes, please? definitely. So iPhoto also announced last week, and it's available for uh, the iPad 2, the new iPad, and iPhone 4 and 4S, exactly. um, and it ties into uh, the camera. So there's a new camera on the back of the it's iPad. It's a five megapixel camera. Five megapixel, five megapixel camera, but also using the same lens technology that's in the iPhone 4S. And this is a photo I think you took. Yeah, that's, uh, the, let's go to the photos you took because they're going to be okay. better. Uh, so yeah, the the camera's roughly uh, equivalent to what's in the iPhone 4. Four not the 4S. Um, it's five not megapixel. Eight megapixel. It's, I think it's okay, it's serviceable. It, it went from being a completely bad camera. Useless, useless almost. Useless in, yeah. in the iPad 2, to actually being something that you could use. I don't think it's a great camera, though. Uh, I mean, it, it's serviceable. Yeah, serviceable. And also, the front-facing camera is unchanged. It's still Same. a VGA camera. They call that the FaceTime camera. FaceTime still looks really grainy. So uh, if you, when you're holding these, and they, they, it feels exactly the same thickness as the iPad 2. Like I, when we put it side by side, you can see a difference. Yeah. So, but if you're just right next to hand, each other, the i, the new iPad is technically a little thicker than the old iPad, mm -hmm. and also about between 50 and 60 grams heavier. Exactly. I want to see if I can tell the difference. Okay. So your eyes are closed. I'm looking the other direction. Give me, give me both hands. Okay. You're swapping them left to right. This is where he drops the iPad. Which one's this which one? Ah, oh, he's got it. It's it's actually pretty noticeable. Okay. Heavier. So yeah. uh, so that so the weight is actually heavier. It weighs uh, about the same as the iPad 2 with smart cover is what I right. noticed immediately. But still lighter than the first generation. Exactly, iPad. and thinner as well. Yeah. So you mentioned smart cover. The old smart covers all still work with the new iPad. Uh, this is one we bought last year. And something to note. The polyurethane smart covers. It doesn't hold up very well. No, it's this is completely old and real dirty. Dirty. And and yeah. If you're gonna buy a smart cover, uh, spend the extra thirty dollars and buy the leather one. Exactly. I think yeah. the leather is the way to go. Uh, the last thing to talk about is the is the wireless connections. Yes. Uh, this is the Wi-Fi model. Uh, you have a four G model coming later today, hopefully. So that was the other big thing. Yeah. Right? The third big thing. Uh, the, both on Verizon and AT and T, the new iPad will support four G LTE. The models cost $130 more. Exactly. And the data plans are different from Verizon and AT&T, and coverage is different. Verizon seems to be the way to go. Wider coverage right now. Also, uh, they have a $20 data plan for one gigabyte exactly. a month. Exactly. And hotspot is included. Free wireless tethering. It's not included right now with AT&T models. Right. Uh, and also, of course, wireless. Uh, Verizon has 196 markets of 4G versus like 26 for AT&T. Yeah, 28 and like expanding this year. Um, you know, I think actually the most amazing technology here isn't something you can see. It's in the battery. Really? The battery life, which we haven't tested yet, obviously. We just took it out of the, out of the box. Uh, but Apple said that the new battery in here is 42 watt hours compared to 25 watt hours on the iPad 2. So almost double the battery. Four on the iPad 1. My MacBook Air 11 inch has a 35 watt hour battery. The battery in the new iPad, bigger, more powerful, more capacity than the one but same battery life. Air. Same battery life, 10 hours on a regular Wi-Fi. Couple of other small things to note. Mm -hmm. uh, we definitely noticed that the back is a little bit warmer, the back left corner specifically, yeah. right here. You, it definitely feels warm when you're using it. That's new for the iPad. Um, uh, other than that, it feels really a lot the same. The screen looks really nice. It doesn't necessarily leap out at you, but when you start looking at text, at least for me, I notice immediately, which is a good change. Uh, we'll be back, of course, later today with more iPad coverage. We're taking it apart oh my right now after this. Uh, and then we'll have some tech stories uh, later next week and, and this weekend. So for Tess and I'm Will. I'm Norm. We'll see you guys later. Bye.